So you're a multi-million dollar chocolate manufacturer, Mars, Nestle, Hershey's, or whatever your name is. You sell a product that has always been in demand, from the Mayans to the Aztecs, to the Spanish bringing hot cocoa to Europe, to the advent of milk chocolate in 1876. People went crazy for the sweet coca flavored candy, and by the start of the 20th century, mass production of chocolate bars had begun. What started out as an expensive indulgence, reserved only for society's elites, was now a candy enjoyed by everyone. And with mass production came the possibility of equally massive profits. But there was just one problem. Coca is expensive, and its price is eating into your margins. You have to import the beans all the way from the Ivory Coast in West Africa, and by the time it reaches the US or Europe, it's already changed hands so many times that the price is ridiculous. So we need a way to lower our costs. Well, luckily, another industry that also gets their supply from Africa had already solved this dilemma and was making massive profits from it. The Diamond Cartel See, the Diamond Cartel or De Beers in the 1900s controlled the diamond market with an iron fist because they controlled all the diamond mines in Africa. And these diamond mines were often ran with child or forced labor. They were ripe with bloodshed, earning those diamonds the nicknames Conflict Diamonds or Blood Diamonds. The result of these low-wage diamond mines? Insane profits, unimaginable wealth. So all you gotta do is take a lesson out of their handbook. But instead of harvesting blood diamonds, you harvest blood chocolate. Coca made off of the backs of questionable labor so that you can make a fortune off of the world's insatiable lust for chocolate. Yes, today the world consumes 7.7 .7 million metric tons of chocolate a year, with around half of that being in Europe. That's over $200 billion in chocolates. The chocolate business is as big as the country of Greece. But while first world kids are enjoying their sweet snacks, third world children are having a completely different experience with the chocolate industry. Millions, Millions children. of children, yes. Working as slaves. Working as slaves. This is blood chocolate. How the world's favorite candy is rooted in forced labor. I'll be whatever you want me to be. Milky Way bars, for instance, are made the Milky Way with gallons and gallons of whole grade A milk, fluffy whites of cackle fresh eggs, the world's finest pure milk chocolate, all to make every bite a luscious, chewy treat. Real satisfaction. That's what you buy candy for. They've never tasted the chocolate they were producers. They have no idea of the billions of dollars made each year. He earns no wages for his work, he says. Just food, the occasional tip from the owner, and the torn clothes on his back. Kids, some as young as 10, are fueling a child labor movement in the cocoa fields of Western Africa. But you might be surprised to learn that nearly every time you take a bite of that delicious sweetness, you have the hands of a child slave to thank. Nearly two-thirds of the world's cocoa production comes from West Africa, where an estimated 1.6 million children work illegally on farms across the region. There is almost nothing that children love more than chocolate. But there are some kids who are forced to make it. Bosco and milk. Just a little stirring. Bosco's got plenty of vitamin D, too. Oh boy, a Bosco milk party. Getting lost is sure fun. What's going on here? Don't worry, Chief. I saved some Bosco milk for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate is a combination of coca butter or powder, sugar, milk, and other ingredients. Most of the coca beans used to make coca butter or powder come from Africa, specifically the Ivory Coast, a nation off of the west coast of Africa. Up to 41% of the world's coca comes from the Ivory Coast, and companies like Nestle and Mars buy most of the supply. But it wasn't always like this. Before the mass production of coca started, companies like you were paying good money for coca, which obviously left you with less profits. So you and the other chocolate companies came together, allegedly, and an unspoken agreement was entered into. An unspoken agreement that set a new standard price for coca beans, so that every multi-billion dollar chocolate company paid the same price for coca beans. No higher, no lower. This meant that coca farmers no longer had the luxury of selling coca to the highest bidder. By banding together, these chocolate companies could make sure they will all collectively push the price of coca down as much as possible, upping the profits and squeezing the farmers for all they have. Or in other words, a cartel was formed. Here's how it works. Today, most big chocolate companies don't actually buy their coca straight from the farmers. Instead, farmers sell one kilogram of dry coca beans to an intermediary for around $1. These intermediaries collect coca beans from the farmers in their region. They wash and pack them and then resell the coca to national exporters, this time for around $2.90. 
the beans are transported all over the world, and then sell to chocolate manufacturers at just over $3 a kilogram. As a chocolate manufacturer, you turn every 1 kilogram of coca beans into around 40 chocolate bars, depending on how much coca they have in them. That means even if you sold these chocolate bars at $1 each, you still be making a profit of around $15 per kilogram of coca beans, depending on what else you put in the candy of course. In an industry where around 1.3 billion kilograms of chocolate are eaten in America alone, that's already worth at least $21 billion in profits. The cartel is working, all at the cost of the coca farmers' livelihoods. In 2014, global chocolate sales reached $100 billion, with most coca farmers making around $1.25 a day. When you do the math, manufacturers walk away with a sweet 35% of the total value for every ton of coca, while coca farmers, they only receive 6.6%. Because farmers are being paid just enough to stay under the poverty line, farmers have to resort to looking for cheaper sources of labor in order to survive. So they turn to kids. Why haven't you heard of this dark side of chocolate before? Because these chocolate companies know the importance of branding. It's the reason why you don't even need to read the name Kit Kat or M&M to know what's inside their packaging. The designs are so iconic and recognizable all over the world. However, making beautiful designs that make you money can be really difficult and expensive. Luckily today, there's a one-stop shop for all your graphic design and branding needs. And that one-stop shop is Canva, today's video sponsor. Canva allows you to make these amazing professional-looking Instagram stories, YouTube thumbnails, YouTube intro animations, slide decks, desktop wallpapers, infographics, and even full-blown videos. It's honestly pretty insane how much you can do. Canva has thousands of easy-to-use customizable templates made by professional designers. Stuff that actually looks shockingly good. It's super intuitive to use, you can work on mobile or desktop. Canva basically makes it impossible for you to design something ugly. You can even use Canva right now for free. But you really want to get Canva Pro, because you just get so many more features, including millions upon millions of assets and almost double the amount of customizable templates. One of my favorites is their one-click background remover, something that is notoriously tedious and time-consuming to do. But with Canva, you can do it in one click. Another favorite of mine is their built-in content planner, where you can make designs in Canva and then schedule those same designs to go live on something like Instagram, all within the same platform, where traditionally, you'd have to pay around the same amount for a separate scheduling app. So if you're interested in trying out Canva Pro, they've got you covered with a free 45-day trial with the link below. Seriously, if you have a business or an online brand, Canva is a complete game changer. So give it a try for free for 45 days with the link below. If you are a farmer and you have no choice but to resort to cheap or free labor to survive, what could be a better source than kids between the ages of 10 and 14? They're less likely to escape, can't fight back, can't demand raises, can't unionize, and are naive enough to believe the lies the traffickers tell them. The kids who work on plantations in the Ivory Coast come from all the neighboring countries, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. His list includes children aged 7, children from Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. These young workers are either taken by force, or for the naive ones that are desperate for money, the people bringing them over just tell them how rich they're going to become on the other side, and then they comply. You get rich, right? <laughs> they're brought to the borders by bus, and are smuggled over on the backs of motorcycles. For each young worker, farmers pay at least $267 to the people bringing them over. <laughs> Once they reach the plantations, the young workers are forced to clear vegetation, spray pesticide, and harvest coca, often for 12 or more hours a day, 7 days a week. Most of them don't get paid, and for the luckiest ones, the best they can get is 85 cents a day. What this all means for you, the chocolate manufacturer, is lower priced coca. And we're able to get away with all of this because of a little something called plausible deniability. Nestle 
Kansas. Using young, affordable labor to force down the price of coca has worked out very well. But by the year 2000, the cartel ran into a problem. Media reports start flooding the world about how chocolate companies like you are knowingly buying coca from farms that use young, affordable labor. Kids, some as young as 10, are fueling a child labor movement in the cocoa fields of Western Africa. But you might be surprised to learn that nearly every time you take a bite of that delicious sweetness, you have the hands of a child slave to thank. Nearly two-thirds of the world's cocoa production comes from West Africa, where an estimated 1.6 million children work illegally on farms across the region. There is almost nothing that children love more than chocolate. But there are some kids who are forced to make it. It goes so far that a U.S. Senator Tom Harkin and Representative Elliot Engel even came up with a new policy calling for the elimination of child labor on coca farms by 2005. But 10 years ago, horrifying evidence of child labor and human trafficking in West Africa's cocoa fields put immense pressure on the industry to change. What I felt, and I know what Elliot felt at the same time, is that we have to do something about this. This poses the first real threat to your cartel in its entire history, so something had to be done. Now what you have to understand is that the masses are a very forgetful bunch. One day they're outraged about this, and a month later they'll be outraged about something else. So to calm them down until they move on to the next outrage, the chocolate company signed this new Harko Engel protocol to end young affordable labor on coca farms by 2005. But since the masses will soon forget all about this, there's no rush to actually put an end to this young affordable labor. Harkin and Engel wanted the industry to certify chocolate as free from the worst forms of child labor. But the industry fought back against the legislation. What Harkin and Engel got wasn't a law, but a voluntary agreement by the chocolate companies to stop exploitation as a matter of urgency. It became known as the Harkin Engel Protocol. Because you see, the child labor used on coca farms isn't your fault. In fact, you have nothing to do with it at all. Remember, you don't actually buy your coca from the farmers. No, there are at least two middlemen between you and the farmers. Which leaves us with some handy excuses. We don't know who works on the farms, how could we? We're not even in contact with the farmers, it's out of our hands. I don't know if, if these traffic exists, and if it exists, uh, I presume that it is exceptional. It has been a few times now in those origin countries, these are things I haven't seen myself. But if it exists, yeah, okay, it's clear that it should be condemned, and this is, again, something which is absolutely unacceptable. Of course. Then you can do some public relations stunts, like investing a tiny $150 million out of the $200 billion market to eradicate child labor, build some schools for even more publicity, all the while knowing that as long as coca prices stay low, these schools will be empty. Fast forward to the next two deadlines and still, nothing changes. Which brings us to today. 20 years later where not one of the governments has spoken out about how chocolate manufacturers take advantage of their people. Not one company has had any of its executives fined, arrested, or fired. So what is the secret to getting away with using young, affordable labor? I'm only asking for a friend. That's creamy milk chocolate. That's delicious dark chocolate. That's a layer of smooth milky bar. Now, put them together. That's Nestle's Triple Bar. Three wonderful tastes in one. Nestle's exciting new Triple Bar. When the reports came out and exposed the chocolate companies, the chocolate industry went underground. Suddenly, everything became a secret, and no one was allowed onto the farms where the kids were working. But that wasn't enough. It was only a matter of time before human rights groups started to ask the local governments too many questions and bring up things like the international criminal courts. So to circumvent them, you beat them to the chase and go to the local government officials yourself. Allegedly. See, the Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, and many other West African nations are very poor, with few exports besides coca. Without the taxes and fees coming from exporting coca, the governments wouldn't have enough cash to work with, which would mean the presidents and ministers wouldn't get to enjoy their positions of power. So both you and the local governments have similar incentives. Keep the coca racket going. That's why the Ivory Coast First Lady allegedly had her people kidnap and kill a journalist reporting on government corruption in the coca industry. French-Canadian journalist Guy-André Kiefer was kidnapped in a parking lot on the Ivory Coast. He was doing a story about bribery and the laundering of coca money in the Ivorian government. He has never been found. That's why lower level ministers and officials say this young, affordable workforce doesn't exist. So if you go now to Dalawa, I don't think this still exists. So you force down prices, you remove yourself from any direct involvement in child labor, and you've gotten the government on your side. 
the only obstacle left is the public. You got any chocolate? Chocolate? When you said chocolate, you said a mouthful. When you buy a chocolate, you get a mouthful of chocolate too. Wow. You get an extra light chocolatey mouthful when you bite a Nestle's Chocolate, the only chocolate bar whipped up so light, it fills your mouth with chocolate. A chocolate, please. Chocolate? You said a mouthful. When you bite a chocolate, you get a mouthful of chocolate too. Today, some chocolate bars have a fair trade label on them, or a stamp that reads sustainably sourced. For the consumers that know about the young, affordable workforce in the coca industry, these labels help them justify stuffing unhealthy sugar down their throats, while not feeling guilty about it. That they're making the world a better place by paying a little extra for their chocolate to be 100% young, affordable, labor-free. But is it really? Because you and I know the truth by now. With thousands of farms and apparently no way of knowing who works where, how can we be really sure that these are conflict-free coca beans? The truth is you don't. And the fair trade label on most chocolates? Well, they mean as much as the Harkin Engel Agreement you signed in 2001. Because less than 10% of the farms included in the list of ethical farms are actually inspected by third parties. Less than 10% of the farms used to make sustainably sourced coca have been confirmed as young, affordable, labor-free. And even the farms certified by groups like the Rainforest Alliance still may have children working on them. But regardless, this label serves its purpose, and the masses are placated. Once again, it came out a little bit more purple than I anticipated. I look like an SJW, but it should fade out to a more natural blonde, and I'm not gone full SJW just yet. If you're new here, we make video essays, documentaries on the most provocative stuff in the world of money, power, war, and crime. So if you're not already, click that subscribe button below. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain, and you can always dislike, unsubscribe, and leave me your best hate comments anytime you want. If you want more day in the life kind of stuff, you can follow me on Instagram at jaketrend.io. That's going to wrap it up. Thank you for being part of the Watch to the End Club. Keep sharpening that mind, stay dangerous out there, and I will see you guys in the next one.